We are Aboriginal students and Aboriginal people from Rodney College who come together from all over Tasmania and have created a, a mob of cultural awareness at our college. So our dancers today are going to do two dances for you. The first one is a cleansing dance. So a cleansing dance gets rid of all the bad energy from all around the country and makes way for good energy and our old ones and our ancestors to come through. And so after you've cleansed, you can welcome them. So the second dance they will do is a welcome dance, which welcomes all of you people onto this country, all of our ancestors, all of the animals and all of the plants onto the country. Well, we've all come onto this property down in um, what they call today Bangor to meet on country with uh, a group of different diverse people. So we've had Aboriginal education, Aboriginal people and students, but we've got university, science, faculty, uh, Greening Australia and the local landowner. So um, we've come onto their property to look at what's on the country, connect ourselves with the landscape and work with as in from Aboriginal perspective and current science perspectives about how do we care for country, basically. I'm an ecologist and a scientist, and I'm both trying to bring together Aboriginal science with Western science of ecology, and inspire also the next generation of leaders who can have some impact and help make the world a better place. This is around uh, Science Week, uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. There's um, a lot of us here together from different places. I'm an Aboriginal educator and, and a cultural practitioner and, and an artist and lots of different titles, but I'm just, to me, I'm an Aboriginal man that's very passionate about my heritage and my culture and really passionate about the country. We are part of this landscape. Um, we, are, uh, we are organic. We're not made of anything artificial and we, we need to maintain that we're connected to country. Western science and Western culture is based more about being above nature and having dominion over nature than being a part of nature. As an ecologist, I ascribe to being a part of nature. We are one super invasive species, but we need to bring those two knowledge systems together so that we can look after the landscape, both at a local scale here on Bangor property, scale of Tasmania, Australia and the whole world. The school kids that have been here have got to breathe the air, feel the country and also use their minds and their, their bodies in building some structures. They've had to go through and that fits into what people call, today call STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths. It's um, a big mouthful but our ancestors were doing all of those things and as Aboriginal people we still do all of those things today and we just don't, you know, use those words. So you might look at problem solving in building a structure, having to work out, maybe to pace out how big it is, is, is the maths. And the problem solving and the engineering on the structure itself to have uh, integrity and have strength. And to look at the, the weather and the, the, the landscape about where would we position a structure so that it, you know, it's not in a path of either uh, animals or weather. Um, there's a lot involved in all of that, so when you go through and you start to look at, it, look at living in a landscape, you had to naturally do all of those things they call STEM today. We need to be bringing together Aboriginal science and the Western science of ecology. My way of thinking is that humans are very much a part of the ecology, and if we try to think we're above nature, then we're going to screw up badly, as we are at the moment with climate change. So an ecologist thinks within that structure, we are one species, we're one type of animal, everything we do is interconnected, but we're a very powerful animal and we can actually destroy the place that we live in. I hope they're connected to being outside on this landscape they'll go away from this experience on this landscape. It'll take them over a few days to actually think about the things and the smells and the senses. Um, and hopefully it'll trigger to them that they want to get back more you know, in the environment, that they're getting things from today that they're not getting sitting in their room on an on a electronic device, that they're actually thinking, well, that was, that was good and maybe cool and fun. 
but that's a way of getting them back out and they can see the miracles and start to connect with the environment and then they're growing up with that, that connection then will want them to, um, to honour and to respect it and to protect it. Young people are full of curiosity. They have unbounded curiosity. What I would love to see is that they get inspired to continue their education because education and knowledge is empowering. If they can bring their Aboriginal knowledge and learn the, the Western science or the Western knowledge, bring those together, these are the leaders of the future in 30 years time and we need Indigenous knowledge and Western knowledge to be standing as equals side by side and be proud of this shared heritage that we've got here.